Today, we start building Coruscant. And for the last week, I have just been looking at Naboo and how good it looks into the city. But I'm definitely feeling the city is a bit too overcrowded, especially with all the vehicles I've added recently. So I think I'm gonna keep all of these Star Wars ones, but some of the ones like these Mario Go Karts, now that we've got the Mario Kart sets rumored for next year and they look nothing like these builds, I think I'm probably gonna tear them down. And not only does that give me a few more pieces, but if I remove these now, it will slowly clear up the street and you can see already, it's starting to look a bit nicer. So I'm also gonna move some minifigures around and get some minifigures in the towers today just to clear them off the street and then we can start working on the bottom floor which you've probably seen by now is going to be the Jedi Temple and I think that's looking much better you can see we only have six speeders now on the road and I've created a better story with these two over here we have Han Speeder with two cops in and there was some sort of chase because we've got a Jawa and a robber or a criminal in Luke's land speeder and that has crashed into a light post. The Lego queue is a lot smaller than it was. It no longer spans the entire city. We have a few more stories over here. I have kept this toy soldier. Perhaps it's someone in costume for people to take photos with. Actually, Leicester Square has loads of these by the Lego store. So I should probably put them somewhere around the Lego store. I could put them in the little gap left by Leicester. So I guess he's now going in there and that is a photo op for people on their way out. But first, they have got to make it through this very packed crowd. The Lego store's always popular and thankfully the land speeder crashed into this lamppost and no citizens were harmed during the high speed chase. If we pan along, I'm not going to point out everything, but we have like someone on roller skates. We have Doc waiting at the crossing with a few other people. Steve is just by the cantina, which is a reference to the Minecraft display we've got going on. Though at the minute, I'll admit, it doesn't have much going on. And then we have a few more stories like this little chase. We've got this guy being chased by a zombie and then this child in a lion costume is chasing the zombie, which looks like a bit of fun. I have added quite a few minifigures into the previous modulars in the boo, in the throne room specifically. We've got a secret meeting that Wildstyle is holding and you can see a few different minifigures in there. I've moved the figs of me and my fiance to the balcony of the lake house and you can also see some other figures in there. Me in my Spider-Man costume and the CMF that looks like my partner. I've also added the eagle to the top with the owl keeping it company and Tatooine Tower has a ton of minifigures inside. I think We'll probably need to do a video going over all of the different scenes I've created once we've done with Coruscant. But so far, we're a few minutes into the video and we haven't done anything. So let's start work on this Jedi Temple. And then once I'm done with the Jedi Temple, I have to break all of these down because my part out backlog is not really a lot, but it's definitely getting there. We have the creatures from where I built the Jedi Survivor creatures. We still have one more advent mock that I just can't bring myself to part out. I think that bark speeder looks so good. So check out both of them videos and then all the vehicles we pulled out of the city. As we are building the Jedi Temple and you know how the Sith were able to hide for so long, I thought it would be the perfect place to literally have Sith hiding underneath the Jedi Temple. If you're wondering why I've built it four blocks too short or thin and only built it 12 out of the 16 blocks. I'm hoping that the second floor can arch over towards Otter Gunga. Perhaps leave a little gap, but arch over towards this gap and we can have a little underground alley, sort of like the underworld of Coruscant. Who knows, we could probably have a Boba or Django hiding there for a 1313 reference, but I'm not gonna focus on that today. I'm just gonna try and get the Jedi Temple done. We've got the steps in front of it and I do want to add some sort of statue at the front but had to show off the hidden sith before it's covered up with all these six by six plates because it's not really something that i'll be able to show off when the build is complete so as you can see it is now completely being covered up and with that it's time to get back to working on the jedi temple So the Jedi Temple has been complete, at least the first floor 
I don't think we'll continue this to the next floor. There are a few other buildings I want to get to and we'll take a look at the interior in just a second. But for the exterior, I've mixed up bricks with a few different types of bricks and you can see most of them around these two sides. So I won't try and show off the third side, but I think it does look quite good. The Jedi Temple seems to be more of a sandy stone, but these masonry bricks don't just represent your typical bricks, but can also represent that sort of sandy stone material. So I think that does work. And on the interior, we'll take a look closely. In just a second, we have three Jedi High Council chairs, or just council chairs for that matter. And I come across this excerpt from an old Star Wars dictionary that has three main different types of seats. And it seems to cover all the bases. We've got this chair here that Yoda and Yaddle sits in. We've got Mace Windu and Ki Adi Mundi's chair. Although I have opted to put Ki Adi Mundi in this chair on the left used by Plo and Depa Balaba, who was Caleb Toon's master. Now looking on Rebrickable for other designs, I come across this design by Shriki, which is pretty good, but the chairs are just way too big for what I can fit in this 16 by 16 modular. So I've opted to create a few smaller chairs and let's take a closer look. We'll start off with Yoda's, which as you can see, does look more like a beanbag on the left. So that's what I've tried to recreate. By the way, to sit down Yoda, because his legs are a brick high, I've used these snot bricks, which have a hole in the bottom that can be attached to studs. In this case, the jumper tiles underneath. And then you can attach the top of Yoda to the top of these bricks. It does create a nice little fold like you see with minifigure legs. And we'll take a look at Windu and Kiadi Mundi if you're not quite understanding what I mean. But it works really nice. And again, I've taken this from, I think officially, this was first used by Lego in the giant Rivendell set for the Hobbits, but it works really, really nicely and also gives Yoda some bum cheeks, which I think is hilarious. But this is just the first chair of three, as we also have Mace Windu and technically this is Kiadi Mundi's chair too. You can see we've got the cushion just underneath Mace and you can see with Windu that his feet raised just a little bit above where I guess the hip would be. So from the front, you can see it's just coming up to that torso. And that's what the snot bricks do with Yoda's legs as well. So that's quite nice. And for the back, it's quite simplistic, but it gets the shape of the chair. And I've used these wedge slope elements to create that little gap that you see on the left. So I think that's worked quite nicely. And then last but not least, we have the chair of Plo and Depa, which has been used for Ki Adi Mundi and I like this because it keeps Ki Adi Mundi one plate taller than the other two when he's put in the modular but this chair is another simplistic design and I think it comes across well so let's put these in the modular and wrap up the video. I think it just looks so much better than the old blocky system of the city which is very forward it does close the city in quite a bit compared to this new style where you can see Naboo is well, very different to Tatooine Tower on the right, but it's got its own structure. It goes in, we've got the alleyway underworld system next to the Jedi Temple and Theed Hangar. And I think that statue at the front of the Coruscant building definitely makes it different to the rest. I don't know how we're gonna deal with that lightsaber element pointing up when we continue to the second floor, but that'll be a problem for next week. You can just about see into it with Yoda, Windu and Mundi having their own little meeting. And the two arches mean not only can you see it from one perspective, like with many of these buildings, you get a glimpse into one direction, mainly talking about the windows down here. And you can't really see what's happening in the other corner, whereas this fully opens it out. I guess it's a bit like Watto's Wares, where you can see the whole way through into the back of the modular. And I really like that. So going forward, hopefully we can create some giant windows like we see on Coruscant and bring the building to life as we see in the mainly the prequel trilogy, though it does pop up a few times elsewhere. So I hope you enjoyed. Check out the videos on screen for more and don't forget to subscribe so you can see what the finished Coruscant Tower looks like. Thank you so much for watching and may the bricks be with you always.